Alien Isolation has cemented itself as one of the most notable and terrifying video games of the last decade. Set 15 years after the events of Ridley Scott's horror masterpiece Alien, the video game lets you take on engineer Amanda Ripley, the daughter of Final Girl hero and power-loading badass from the original movie, Ellen Ripley. Contained within an incredibly creepy environment reminiscent of the original 1979 film, Alien Isolation delivers a nerve-shredding survival horror experience thanks to the alien's revolutionary AI system. Now, of course, we all know that this is one of the most uncompromisingly frightening video games to date. But there are a bunch of other things that you probably didn't know about Alien Isolation that the lovely developers have tucked away. And who doesn't love a bit of trivia, am I right? So let's take a look at the fun factoids lurking on the dark side of Sylvester Pole Station, where chestbursters, alien queens, and xenomorph leg workouts are aplenty. I am the Android Ash from What Culture Gaming, and these are 20 things you didn't know about Alien Isolation. 20. Amanda is modelled on Sigourney Weaver's mother, who was an older Amanda in Aliens. Being Ellen's daughter, it only makes sense that the character model of Amanda would bear a resemblance to the actor who portrayed her mother for four films. However, rather than basing the character model on Sigourney Weaver, the team at Creative Assembly based the character's appearance on Welsh actor Kaisia Burroughs, who provided the motion capture for the character alongside photographs of English actor Elizabeth Inglis, Weaver's own mother, during her younger years. Using Weaver's mother Inglis instead of the alien actor herself may seem like an odd choice, but this decision is closely connected to the film series. In the director's cut of James Cameron's Aliens, Ellen is shown a photograph of her now-deceased 66-year-old daughter, and that picture is of none other than Inglis herself. It just goes to show how much attention to detail went into developing this game to make it as close to the series as possible. 19. The Alien Operates on the Menace Gauge to maintain the fear factor throughout the course of the game, Creative Assembly had to get the Xenomorph's AI design just right to keep the level of tension raised without the game ever reaching the point of being unfair to players. To do this, the team implemented the aptly named Menace Gauge. Similar to Left 4 Dead's stress meter, the Menace Gauge kept an eye on how much pressure was put on the player based on various factors, including proximity to the creature, whether it was in line of sight, and how easily it could reach the player. Whenever the menace level gets too high, the system then tells the alien to slink off elsewhere or retreat into the walls, allowing players to catch a much-needed breather before it inevitably comes back for more. 18. The Xenomorph Learns As You Play In addition to the menace gauge, the creature's behavior is also dictated by its own clever little AI system. The alien's own AI, which works in tandem with the directorial system, operates through a behavioral tree, which is a flowchart of sorts that controls and prioritizes the alien's actions in over 100 points, or nodes. At the start of a new game, the alien only has access to 30 of these nodes, but as a player progresses, new behaviors are unlocked whenever certain triggers are activated or conditions are met. Consequently, this gives the impression that the creature is learning from the player's actions, in turn becoming a more challenging obstacle in the process. For example, if players hide in certain places, like a locker, the xenomorph will start to look in those places first. Thankfully though, Andy Bray, the lead AI programmer on the game, has stated that in order to keep the gameplay as fair as possible, these learning moments don't come from anything that leads to the player's death. 17. The Alien Never Cheats as tremendously cruel as being surprised by the alien at the worst possible moment can be, it might come as a surprise to learn that the creature doesn't use any dirty tricks to gain the upper hand or to generate any cheap scares. Whenever the creature is in play, it operates by its own non-scripted and complex AI systems to hunt players. In other words, the game always knows where you are, and it's the xenomorph's job to find out where that is. And according to your friend and mine, Andy Bray, this design philosophy holds true for the entire game. Although it may seem unfair the creature has somehow magically caught you, it is all purely the result of the cunning AI doing its job, combined with the game's intricate level design. However, Bray has confirmed that the creature does teleport twice in the game in order to appear in specific cutscenes. Well, we'll let him off for that one, the Xenomorph does have places to be. 16. The music was created by the team who composed Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag. 
In addition to being pursued relentlessly by a hungry xenomorph in a claustrophobic setting, another contributing factor to alien isolation's unparalleled terror comes from its unnerving, atmospheric score. And for this, we can thank the combined musical talents of Joe Henson and Alexis Smith. As self-confessed fans of Scott's original film, the duo, who worked alongside Christian Henson, were able to craft a soundscape that immersed players within the familiar setting of the alien universe, as well as bombarding players' senses with pure terror. Not only was this the first ever horror score the pair composed, their previous project was something completely different, Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag, where they created the soundtrack for the game's multiplayer mode. Sorry, what's that? Why are there no space sea shanties, you ask? Why, I have the very same question. 15. The alien's design was slightly changed from H.R. Giger's original. When using one of cinema's most iconic and fearsome monsters as a prominent presence, it was imperative that the team over at Creative Assembly got the creature's design right. From its two mouths, elongated head, and massive stature, the game's main antagonist felt identical to H.R. Giger's design in the original film. Except for one interesting detail. Whereas in the film, the alien had human-like legs, it was a man in a rubber suit, after all, the video game counterpart's legs featured an inverted knee to give them a more curved look. Originally, the alien in the game did feature the same leg design as the film, but after playing the game, the team felt as if there was something off about the legs. It looked like the alien just couldn't move fast enough. The inverted knee was then introduced to get around the issue. The idea was it would give the creature's hams a more spring-like look, and give the impression it could move quickly if it needed to. How's that for leg day? 14. The sound dynamically changes to emphasize the xenomorph. The importance of sound design in video games, especially horror games, should never be underestimated. Sound makes up a large part of the game's environment, fills players in on contextual clues, like the telltale bleeping of the game's save stations, and can alert them to the presence of enemies, something that's made all the more crucial when the enemy in question is a deadly xenomorph. Earning a BAFTA for their achievements, the sound engineers of Alien Isolation use plenty of little tricks to bring the world of the game to life. One of the sneakiest being dynamically adjusting the audio to emphasize the sounds of the alien. Whenever the alien is close to the player, its sounds are raised above other game sounds. The closer the monster is, the more its sounds are highlighted. From a gameplay perspective, this makes it easier for players to detect their hunter and plan their escape. But conversely, it heightens the stress and tension levels tenfold knowing the creature is nearby. 13. 20th Century Fox gave Creative Assembly three terabytes of data to work with. One of the biggest achievements of Alien Isolation is undoubtedly how faithful its design is to the aesthetic and atmosphere of, of the retrofuturistic world of the 1979 film. From the haunting sound design, the chunky computers, and those adorable drinking bird desk toys scattered throughout Sevastopol, playing this game feels like stepping straight into the universe that Scott created. This much attention to detail could not have been easy. But thankfully for the team at Creative Assembly, 20th Century Fox, who owned the rights to the film, were generous to give them a whopping three terabytes of archive data from the film's production to help them in their endeavors. Containing everything from details on prop design, original recordings of sound effects, and behind the scenes photos and videos, plenty of which had never been revealed to the public, this was a bona fide treasure trove of information. 12. All items had to look like they were from 1979. As mentioned, part of what made Alien Isolation so remarkable was just how faithfully the design team were able to recreate the distinctive look of the original film, most of which revolves around the clunky, analogue technology that players spend a lot of their time interacting with during their time aboard the Sevastopol. Thanks to all the reference information that was available to the team, recreating the props and areas that were featured in the film was simple enough. But the real challenge came whenever they had to introduce new items into the world they were building. In order to stay consistent with the alien aesthetic, the team limited themselves to basing these props on technology that was available in 1979. The hacking tool, for example, which is one of the main gameplay mechanics, was based on Cold War era technology. Similarly, the motion tracker was designed to look and feel unreliable. 11. Kezia Burroughs was originally supposed to voice Amanda Ripley. In the final version of Alien Isolation, it was American actor Andrea Deck who bestowed her vocal talents onto Amanda Ripley, while Welsh actor Kezia Burroughs provided her likeness and the motion capture for the character. However, things would have been pretty different as Burroughs was originally intended to voice Amanda as well. 
According to an interview with the actor, she had already finished recording the lines for Amanda before Deck was brought into the project for more authenticity. It's not all bad for Burroughs though, as she still did the breathing and pain sounds of the character, although even she isn't sure if they're all her. 10. Why the Working Joes Jog Like the alien, Working Joes will relentlessly hunt you down if they spot you, meaning you'll be spending most of your encounters with them hiding. While hiding from one though, you might catch a glimpse of it stopping its search momentarily to jog on the spot before continuing. No, this is not some weird glitch. It's an easter egg that references a moment in the original film where Android Ash does some light jogging on the spot too. In his director's commentary for the film, Ridley Scott alludes to this being a maintenance protocol that keeps the androids in working order. 9. Aliens William Hope voices Marshall Waits in addition to the original cast of Alien returning for the Crew Expendable DLC, Alien Isolation also has an unexpected connection to James Cameron's action-packed sequel, Aliens. William Hope, who betrayed incompetent but well-meaning Lieutenant Gorman in Aliens, provides a voice for the equally incompetent but immensely cold-hearted Marshal Jethro Waits in Alien Isolation. Not only does Waits' short-sighted decision-making skills play a sizable role in the devastation of Sevastopol, his cruelty sees him attempt to kill Amanda by using her as bait to trap the creature before jettisoning them both into space. At least Gorman was able to redeem himself in Aliens before he meets his end. We didn't even get the satisfaction of seeing Waits meet his demise at the hands of the androids in the game. 8. Anisadora is an alternative name for Pandora what would the Alien franchise be without any apt metaphors on life and mythology? As such, Alien Isolation also contains a subtle, if a little on the nose, parallel to these themes that have coursed through the series. A ship named the Anisadora. In the context of the game's plot, this vessel is what originally brings the Xenomorph onto the Sevastopol after its crew stumbles across the same alien nest the Nostromo's crew finds 15 years prior. In Greek mythology, Anisadora is an alternative name for Pandora, whose curiosity led her to opening a box that released evil into the world as punishment for humanity accepting stolen fire from Prometheus. The alien nest is the metaphorical box, and like Pandora, it was humanity's curiosity that led to the horrors that would ensue. 7. The original filmmakers have sneaky Easter eggs Alien Isolation is full of plenty of sneaky easter eggs and references to the original 1979 film for players to stumble across. One of these comes in the form of posters scattered throughout the deserted space station advertising a lounge singer named Jean Molo. At first glance, this looks to be a quirky piece of set dressing promoting a suave moustache performer. However, this is actually a hidden reference to Oscar-winning costume designer John Molo and concept artist Jean Mobius Giraud, who were both involved in the making of Alien. As fans of Scott's film, it's only fitting that the team at Creative Assembly paid tribute to those whose work was the inspiration in creating the game. This isn't the only easter egg of this kind either. An advert for Corland Gold Cigarettes gets its name from game producer Paul Corland. 6. There was originally an alien queen Late on in the game, players will encounter an alien nest bursting with eggs and crawling literally with facehuggers. In Aliens, it's revealed that only xenomorph queens have the ability to lay eggs. However, those who have managed to survive the horrors of isolation will confirm that there is no queen to be seen in the game. That was not always the case, though. According to an interview with lead game designer Gary Knapper, there were originally plans to imply that a queen was definitely present. However, the team felt that this would seem like the game was building up to a boss fight with the queen, which they believed wasn't in line with the tone that they wanted. That being said, the official art book for the game states that the queen is present, even if she is never on screen. 5. A chestburster was cut from the final game Out of all the deaths witnessed in Alien Isolation, the most hard-hitting is that of Ricardo, one of Amanda's only true allies encountered on the Sevastopol. Unfortunately for Ricardo, he isn't able to make it out alive. When arriving at the area you're supposed to meet him at in the game, he is discovered with a facehugger attached to him. As grim as his fate is, he should count himself lucky though, as his death was intended to be far more graphic. As detailed by game writers Will Porter and Dion Lay, Ricardo was originally intended to be attacked by a facehugger earlier on in the game. This would culminate in a sequence reminiscent of Kane's death, where the newborn xenomorph would force its way out of his insights. This idea was dropped when the team realized that the timeline of events wouldn't line up correctly. They wanted to stay true to the rules of the original film, which implied it took at least 24 hours for the creature to be born after an unlucky victim is attacked by a facehugger. 4. The game is dedicated to late programmer Simon Franco 
Not everything about alien isolation is all xenomorphs and terror. There's a bittersweet story in here, too. On completion of the game, the credits begin with a moving tribute that dedicates the game to one Simon Franco, a veteran developer at Creative Assembly for 10 years who worked as a senior programmer on Alien Isolation. Simon Franco suddenly and tragically passed away in June 2014, just months before the game's October release. But what makes this sad story somewhat sweeter is that a special game jam, an event where small teams of developers create games from scratch in a short amount of time, dubbed Franco Jam, was held in his honour by friends and colleagues. This event continued to raise money for charities over the next four years until 2018. It's small gestures like this that highlight the humanity and teamwork that lies behind every project. 3. Crafting items spawn in randomised locations like many contemporary video games, Alien Isolation utilizes a crafting system for players to build various tools to help them survive against the alien and other threats. In an effort to ramp up the game's tension even further, the items needed to craft invaluable items like medkits or EMP mines are set to spawn in locations randomly. Consequently, this means that players won't know where to go if they're looking for particular items, raising the stakes as the alien can turn up at any moment. Making every playthrough different, the intent behind this decision was to encourage players to explore locations more carefully to find every valuable resource they can get their hands on. 2. The Xenomorph Has Eyes in the Back of Its Head The Xenomorph isn't known as the perfect organism for no reason. Anyone who has seen this acid-blooded hunter in action in any of the Alien films or played Alien Isolation for any length of time will be able to attest to this. The creature's heightened senses easily allows it to hunt down its prey and efficiently take them out. In the game, this means the creature can detect gunshots, footsteps, and even the beeping of the motion detector if it's close enough, one and a half meters to be precise. It does not, however, have any sensors when it comes to its tail. Don't think this means you can get around all your alien-based troubles by simply walking behind it, though. The developers were aware that some may try and do this. They programmed in short-range ray tracers that let it look behind it. The Xenomorph literally has eyes in the back of its head, and that makes it even more terrifying. 1. We almost had a shooter game where we played as Newt Although there's been no official word of a follow-up to the critically acclaimed survival horror game in over five years since its release, news has surfaced that we could have got our hands on a completely different game set in the Aliens universe. Gears of War creator and head of now-closed Boss Key Productions, Cliff Blazinski, has recently unveiled on Twitter that the Lawbreakers studio were in talks with Fox back in 2017 on developing the game. Rather than drawing directly from the film, Blazinski outlined that this game would be based on the Dark Horse comic series. In the game, players would play as a now-grown-up and very much not-dead Newt. Ellen Ripley would have also made an appearance as a Cortana slash Anya figure, and Newt would be accompanied by an android version of her doll Casey's head from the film. Though the studio closed its doors in 2018, the project was solved in 2017 when Disney began their negotiations to purchase Fox. And that's our list. Which of these alien isolation tidbits blew your mind? And what else would you add to this list? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been Ash, and this has been What Culture Gaming. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back soon for some more lovely gaming content. Thanks for watching.